we were walking around the area after they had mined it, moved on to another place, and we followed the smell. We walked around the side of this hill, and we got up in this little draw, and we were picking, my kids were with me too, we were picking bones off the, off the ground, little shards, little leg bones and stuff. So we filled up a garbage bag with those. We went back again and again and again, and then I took an excavator back, built a little road around the side so we could get back to it with a machine. Took a couple dirt the digs out of the muck, found a mammoth tusk. I said, oh boy, let's get something going. So we got a big floating barge and put a pump on it, 471 Jimmy, with a giant. They're, they're called giants, but they're actually hydraulic monitors. They look like big, long pipes that you spray water out of. And our pump was a 8-inch intake, 6-inch outtake, and we nozzled it down to 2, two inches, 2.5 two inches. We could fire the water way out there and wash the overburden away. And the overburden there is about 60 feet high. It's permafrost, silt. And underneath that, you have your gravel layer. And underneath the gravel, you have the gold and the bedrock. And the uh, gravel layer and the muck interface is where most of the bones are. So we started finding lots of bones. I mean, a lot of bones. And in the first three years, we found thousands and thousands of tusks and bison heads and bones. And by the way, your all those skulls you got out there in your in your building here? Yeah. You ain't got a step bison skull. I'm going to fix that shit. <laughs> okay? Okay. I'm going to. And then uh, I don't even know how many we have. We stopped counting. And mammoth tusk, same thing. And when did step bisons go extinct? 12,000 years ago. Wow. And, and so the permafrost is slowly melting. And you are hosing it down and pulling it. So the stench is literally like this ancient rotting biological material. It stinks. It's, wow. It's organic. But it's been frozen forever. Thousands, 20,000 years, 30,000 years. 50, so this 000. is uh, you with the hose spraying it onto the side of this wall. So yeah. the way you do it is you just spray the side of these, like what would you call that hill? It's a muck bench. A muck bench. Yes, sir. So you spray that until you see something poking through? Yes, sir. Well, you spray it, and then you walk up there, and you turn the nozzle off the side, and you'll pick up the bones, the little pieces, leg bones backbones. Uh, Why is there so much in this one area? Nobody knows. Really? Nobody. Well, that's what's so crazy. Like, when I watched the documentary on your place, uh -huh. when uh, you you show this uh, giant room where you have all these buckets of femurs and skulls and tusks and and you have those paleontologists who are just like, they can't even believe what they're seeing. Yeah. That's because a lot of those animals, they say, never lived up there during the Ice Age. So when they see it, and they still think that, I just say, well, they sure as fuck died here. <laughs> <laughs> so go, it's that? changing their ideas of what existed in that area. <clears throat> yes, sir. Wow. And what's the oldest bones you guys have found? We don't know. We've, we've sampled maybe four or five of them. It costs 400 bucks a sample. Do a carbon-14 test on them. If I was to sample my entire collection today, it'd cost $100 million. Because mm. we have close to a quarter million fossils now. The whole place is crazy. I mean, it's it's so hard to believe that this one area has so many bones. Is there, they have no idea of like, did these animals fall into a muck pit? Was it, why are they there? They don't know. No. Because there's so many of them. And we're talking bones. We're not even talking fossils. Right. Right, because they froze. Right. Which is very, very unusual. Right, the the. The uh, documentary you saw that Dick Mole, a mm -hmm. paleontologist. What an unfortunate name, by the way. <laughs> Dick Mole. You know, I see what you're saying there. I know you do. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he's one of the good ones. You know, he's he uh, he came up and spent a few days with us with the filmmaker that made that film. By the way, the filmmaker is a artist pure, just through and through. And I met him when he was working for Net National Geographic. And then he came to me and he says, hey, I'd like to document, make a documentary about the boneyard. So I gave him unfettered access for four years. Just do what you got to do. Just stay out of our way. Don't make me worry about finding you under a muck bench or a tree falling on you. Just go do your thing. So he did. And um, the stuff that you're seeing there, and you saw in that uh, video that you watched, the documentary, it's like nobody knows why any of that stuff is there. Is that the most unusual site that they've ever discovered in terms of just the sheer quantity of bones? Yes. Wow. And you just found it by accident. Yeah. It just makes you think, how many more of those are out there? 
Well, I know one more. Really? It's the next creek down. Yep. So this area where you extract these bones from, how big is the actual area where you're finding these? Five acres. That's it? That's it. Wow. And I, I get blamed. Well, I have a, you've, you're, you're the, I, I got to be honest with you on a little thing here. When you first mentioned the Boneyard Alaska and talked about our site, you, I don't know how you found it, but you found it. You had, uh, uh, who did you have on here? It was Forrest Gallant. Yeah, it was Forrest Gallant. And I picked up 5,000 followers on my Instagram account that day. And I said to myself, the only guy I've ever talked to about this site is Joe Rogan, ever. And I used you as a crutch for three solid fucking years because <laughs> I didn't want to talk to anybody about this. <laughs> but everybody's so interested in it. I said, I'll talk to Joe Rogan. That's it. I've had countless opportunities to talk to newscasters and, and network reality TV people that want to do blah, 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 blah. No, I ain't going to do it. I'll talk to Joe Rogan about it. Well, thank you for that. No, thank you for that. It's My pleasure. Well, it's just so unusual. I, at first, I just thought, oh, you probably found a couple things on this place. And then as I'm going over your Instagram page, and I'm seeing all the stuff that you're pulling out of there. I'm like, this doesn't even seem real. Like, how could this one area have so many bones and so many tusks? Like, how many tusks do you have? Mammoth tusks. We stopped counting. Not because... We can't count that high. It's just because, what's the point? Thousands? I have a friend that says I got 10,000 dead woolly mammoth on my ground. Wow, in five acres. Yeah. That's insane. I, Has, have any of these paleontologists speculated on why this one area would have so many dead animals? No. If they have, they haven't told me. And so you, you dated a few of them. And what were the dates from those few? They went from as recent as 3,000 years ago to 22,000 years ago. Wow. And the reason this site is so interesting to them is because it's from all from one little area. So the context is there. And it spans what's called the extinction event. Uh, Graham is yeah. and Randall. Yeah, the Younger Dryas Impact Theory. Yeah. And so I'm kind of going along with them because... But that would, would make sense why they're all there. Well, you got to remember that the world, the Pleistocene started, what, two and a half million years ago mm -hmm. and stopped about 11,800 years ago. Yeah. So that whole area was ice, except for an ice-free corridor between Siberia and Alaska and the lower 48 that went right through where we're at. 